Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for a new series titled Civilization 6 Tips, in which I'm going to be giving you some tips and some advice on how to improve your game in Civ 6 and maybe help you move up in difficulty. So for this first episode, all that we're going to talk about is just how to set up the game and what the various options do, um, and how to use this to help your game out. So, whenever we go into the Create Game screen, obviously we have all this stuff, you know, you can pick your leader, that's all cool. If you want to hear about which or what the uh, abilities of each leader are, uh, feel free to check out the leader spotlights. We also have our game difficulty, so these are pretty pretty self-explanatory. If you're starting out, I would recommend starting on, on Warlord or Prince. Chieftain and Settler are very, very easy, so I mean, if you really want to, you could start on those, but if you want at least a little bit of a challenge, probably start on Warlord. Um, game speed is another thing that is really important when you're setting up your game. So, by default is on standard, which is, well, just the standard speed, but we also have online, quick, epic, and marathon. So these two are going to be significantly faster than a standard game, and these two are going to be significantly slower than a standard game. Um, if you're playing a multiplayer game, then I would obviously recommend online speed, but even if you're playing multiplayer, I might even recommend quick, because online is so fast, it is double the speed of standard, and it's really hard to just plan or, you know, get your boosts, your Eurekas, anything like that, so I, I honestly think that online is a little bit too fast, if you just want to get a game in quick, go ahead and go for a quick game, it's 33% faster. But if you're looking for a game to kind of help you, like, ease your way into the game, or ease your way into a higher difficulty, definitely go for one of the slower speeds. Um, so Epic, I tend to like just because Marathon is extremely slow. It's 200% slower than, uh, than Standard Speed, but Epic is only 50% slower. So that just gives you a little bit more time to, you know, produce some troops. It gives you a little bit more time to plan out where you're going to do things. It gives you a little bit more time to strategize in general. And this is going to be really helpful if you're going up, if you're moving up in difficulties, because generally the more time you have to strategize, the more advantage you have over the AI, because the AI generally does not strategize very much. So if you are moving up to a higher difficulty, I would definitely recommend playing on epic speed. Uh, we also have the map type here, which map type's pretty self-explanatory. Um, continents is really just the, the, the funnest one, in my opinion. Fractal actually can be really fun. Um, and then Pangea is another one that's really good. Um, if you're going for someone like the Netherlands or a naval sieve, consider Island Plates or uh, Archipelago, or Archipelago, however that's pronounced. Um, both of those would be pretty good for a naval game. Um, but really, this is just up to your own personal preference and whatever you're feeling like playing. Uh, map type is another one that can be pretty influential, so huge map type is 12 players, dual is only 2, and it just increases by 2 players each time, and it also changes the amount of tiles. So I generally like to play on a small map type, um, standard is another really good one, tiny is a little bit, it, 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 it's very small I think, and dual is just like, I mean, unless you're specifically planning to play a dual, I wouldn't recommend playing a dual, but I, I would for the most part recommend smaller standard, I think that they are generally the easiest, um, the problem with huge and large is that there are so many AI in there and they will take just about every single little bit of land that they can and if you're not able to get your way out there and settle a lot, then they'll have such an advantage because they'll have so much more land than you. So I generally like smaller standard because there generally is enough room that they're not going to forward settle you too hard, but also they're not going to get such a ridiculous amount of land that they're going to be so far ahead of you if, like, you don't expand enough. Um, so yeah, generally smaller standard are my preferences there. Um, I would almost always recommend going into advanced setup. So here we pretty much just have the same thing. Uh, the rule set is kind of important. If you have Rise and Fall, I think this defaults to Rise and Fall. But if you actually do want to play a game without loyalty or without, you know, errors, you can set it back to standard rules. Um, and then here you just have all of your um, all of your scenarios if you want to play one of the scenarios. Some of the scenarios are actually pretty fun, so I, I would recommend giving them a try at least. But that's really all that there is in rule set. Uh, we've already been over game difficulty start era. I pretty much always leave this on Ancient Era, but if you want to, like, just get some practice playing in a specific era, you could set this to whichever one you fancy. <laughs> uh, game speed we've been over, city-states. So, I would highly recommend just turning this up to maximum for one reason and one reason only, and that's that the AI is so aggressive towards city-states that they will take so many of them that I try to put as many of them in the game as I can, so that way there are, there are at least some left by the time I can meet them, because if, if you leave it on the standard one, then the AI will just take all the city-states, and there'll be, like, no city-states in the game, and that's not really fun. So I like to turn this up, um, just because it makes it a little bit more fun when there actually are city-states in the game. Uh, we've been over map already, we've been over map size. Uh, resources I generally will leave on standard. If you're really struggling to, like, um, have resources that you need, put them on abundant. Uh, I would pretty much never put it on sparse, because I think that's just not fun, but if you're looking for a challenge, you could put it on sparse. Uh, world Age, 
World Age is a really, really big one that you want to consider whenever you're going for uh, a game. Um, especially if you're playing on DD, where like the AI is just totally cheesing you and you just want to get every advantage that you possibly can. Mess with the World Age. So, New World Age adds more hills and mountains. And more hills and mountains mean generally more production and more possible adjacency bonuses for campuses and holy sites. So, New new World Age is definitely something that can help you out if you're starting out on, on one of the, uh, the higher difficulties and you want to ease your way into it. I would definitely recommend setting your, setting your world age to new just because it allows you to get uh, more production from your hills and such it allows you to get more adjacency bonuses and generally the ai is too stupid to actually utilize those adjacency bonuses so i would definitely recommend uh setting the world age to new if you're moving up in difficulty uh, start position. I generally like playing on standard just because I think it's like a, it's a nice mix of challenge and you know easiness. Um, but balanced is a really good one if you're if you're moving up in difficulty or, or you're new to the game because it makes it so that each player has pretty much an equally good starting spot, equally good resources and such. So I would recommend that. And uh, legendary makes it so that everybody has a great start. Well, not everybody has great starts. Some people have great starts, but not equal. This one can be really fun as long as you're one of the people that gets the legendary start. That one can be particularly fun in multiplayer because some people will start with really good spart, uh, spawns and some people not. And then that can just make it a little bit fun. But uh, I generally like to leave start position on standard. Uh, temperature is another one that uh, I don't mess with too much. I generally leave it on standard. But hot will make it so that there are more desert and less tundra and snow. And cold will make it so that there's uh, more tundra and snow and less desert. I don't find either of these to be particularly useful just because desert and tundra and snow are all pretty pretty useless tiles unless you're playing as Russia. So maybe if you're playing on Russia, set it to cold and yeah, you know that'll help out your game a little bit. But otherwise, I'd say leave this one on standard. Uh, we also have rainfall, which... Uh, in which influences the amount of woods, rainforest, and marsh. This is another one that if you're moving up in difficulty or starting, I would recommend setting this to wet. Because uh, wet will give you more woods, rainforest, and marsh, and what that means is that there's a lot more stuff to chop. And this is really important if you're going to move up to higher difficulties where the AI just gets straight up production bonuses. So having more uh, stuff to chop means that you're, you're actually able to compete on wonders. Um, so I would recommend putting that on wet uh, because that'll just make it a little bit easier. You're going to feel a little bit less cheesed by the AI um, just because you have a lot more stuff to chop. And the last one here is sea level, which I pretty much always leave on standard. But uh, this just influences the amount of water. I'm not sure if this includes lakes or not. So if you're playing maybe like the Netherlands where you want lakes, you could set this to high. Or if you're playing a naval sieve, you could set this to high. But otherwise, I would recommend just leaving this on standard. Uh, we also have our victory conditions down here. I, I generally leave all these on unless like maybe if you're trying to go for an achievement or something like that and someone is just you know being stupid then you could change some of these. Um, another thing is if you are playing on dual size map I would recommend turning off religious victory just because the AI like if you're not going to go for a religion um, the AI will just win a religious victory because they can like super easy. So I would recommend doing that if you're playing on dual size map. And down here we have just some more options. So you could limit the number of turns in the game. I generally don't, um, or like I, I leave the turn limit on because I very rarely ever hit it on on standard speed. That is 500 turns. And if you go to 500 turns and you've not won the game yet, well then, uh, uh, then you're in trouble. Um, no duplicate leaders. That one's whatever. You can just use that as 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 you desire, really. Um, no barbarians. You could turn this on if you're if you're really struggling with barbarians. If you're very new to the game, I would say disable the barbarians. Um, and that might make it a little bit easier, but otherwise I would leave this on because I think barbarians are something that you should probably get used to dealing with, so I would generally leave this on. Um, you could also put on no teams, that's really a multiplayer thing. No tribal villages, oh no, you have to have your goody huts. Goody huts are so good, never, n never, never turn off tribal villages. And we also have team share vis visibility, which once again is pretty much like a multiplayer or a hot seat thing. And then if you ever want to put in a seed, you can put in seeds down here or you can just change the, uh, the map seed. So the map seed and the random seed, there's some difference between them. I admittedly don't know what it is, but uh, <laughs> but if you ever want to uh, go ahead and put in a, a specific seed to get a certain spawn, then you can do that down here. So those are all the options. As I said, if, if you're moving up to higher difficulties, if you're new to the game, I would definitely recommend playing a New World Age, Wet Rainfall, and pretty much leaving everything else standard, and small map size as well. Um, and that should that should make your game a little bit easier. It can make it a little bit less frustrating whenever you're starting out. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. I think in the next episode, we're going to talk about selecting your spawn location and just where, or not selecting your spawn location, selecting where your first city is going to go and just how the factors that you have to take into account for that. Um, so thank you for watching and goodbye.